<clears throat> All right, guys, let's let's continue. Um, I don't know. I just ran into something I haven't seen before, so I wasn't able to reference in that surface. It, I'll have to look up what it was. But um, so what I did instead is I just made two lines. I copied it up and I lofted them. It probably it just created a different kind of surface that gave me a compatible format for some reason. I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, set one surface and um, yeah, reference that one right there. So <clears throat> after you reference it in, the node obviously becomes gray, shows that it has information. Um, but for clarity's sake, I'd like you to turn off the layer that your surface is on. So it should just look like this. This? Yeah. Under params, right here. I'll pause so you guys can get caught up. <laughs> Moving on. So from the surface then, we need to do a couple of things in order to subdivide and create points on it. Uh, the, the most simple fashion is to create what's called a domain. A domain um, is going to be the way that we can break down a three-dimensional surface, one that's not planar and flat and in the x and y direction. We can break it down into what's called u and v coordinates. It's the three-dimensional equivalent to your x and y parameters along certain directions of your surface. Okay, so you might not know what that means, but imagine you take a piece of paper like this, okay, and you lay it down on the table, right? So your x is one edge, your y is the other, assuming it's square. Now you take that paper and you bow it in three dimensions. It still has an x and y, except now they're warped. So those x and y's now become u's and v's. Does that make some sense? Sort of, kind of? Yeah. So anyway, it's really just a, a way to position points across a three-dimensional warped surface. So we're going to do that by uh, a, a series of nodes. And I'll tell you right now that you must pay extra special attention to these nodes because they're, gonna, they're going to occur in almost every class. We're going to use this in almost every class that we have here in this course. So um, those nodes are under math domain, this one right here called divide domain squared. <clears throat> and um, before I go past that point, I want to just talk about what domain is. Um, so domain is basically going to create boundaries of things, okay? So basically, if I was to say, if I have a list of numbers from 1 to 10, my domain is 1 to 10. Does that make sense? Or if I have numbers from 1 million to 5.5 million, my domain is 1 million to 5.5 million. And the same thing happens geometrically when you start subdividing things. And when I say a parameter across an axis, it means like a distance or a magnitude of displacement across that, that line. So when this has a u and a v value, it's asking for a subdivision, a, para a parametrical break in, in whatever surface, whatever axis you've given it, even if it's warped. <clears throat> um, the other one that I want to bring in is under surface and utility. And it's called isotrim. Pay extra spe uh, special attention to isotrim because isotrim, when you drop it in, is called something else. So isotrim, when you drop it in, is called subsurf. It's mega confusing. But just know that when you see subsurf, it is the same as isotrim. <clears throat> Um, these two 
when we use them, we're going to use them a lot and they always go together. And more particularly, they're always, well, not always, but they're predominantly going to form a triangle with whatever your input value is. Okay. So let's read what they require and then um, we'll connect the, bit, uh, the pieces together. So the, the subsurf obviously is going to require a surface. It's going to trim, you know, basically like cut down into segments, whatever surface you give it. And then it requires a domain. So the domain is going to set the range of subdivisions that we need. So that domain is obviously going to be this, even though the output says S, look at the icon. The icon shows you a domain grid segment. Meanwhile, the domain input shows you the domain grid segment. Okay. So don't get confused about letters in Grasshopper. I want you to be in the practice of reading what it's asking for. Don't just connect S to S because S doesn't always go to S. So anyway, um, this S goes to the D of subsurf. And then um, we have something else that this part is less intuitive, um, the base domain. Base domain, if you are subdividing an entire surface, is just the entire surface. If you're subdividing a subdivision, then you have to isolate which of those panels you want to further subdivide. So it looks kind of like this. The surface gets plugged into I. And notice it turns gray. Well, that's because it has a set number, um, a default value of subdivisions for U and V. So then the last connection here, we complete the triangle, right? Triangle, so we got to connect the top two. We plug the surface in, and this is what we get. Now, it looks all hazy because I've got two surfaces here. So if I turn that one off, then you're going to see a subdivided surface. <clears throat> so that's one way of uh, breaking it down. If you go to surface and analysis, you can deconstruct BREP. And when you plug that in, now you have points. So I'm just going to drop this here and connect vertices to it so they become individually selectable. I can turn these off, and there are some points. The Vs, they're the point outputs. Yep. The reason I plug this point in is because if I have deconstruct BREP on and I select it, mm -hmm. I'm actually selecting the faces, the edges, and the vertices. Mm -hmm. If I put a param on the end that matches, I can just select the points. Okay. Where's that deconstruct BREP under? Uh, surface analysis. Okay, <clears throat> so um, I'm going to come around and make sure you guys are caught up to this, that you've got this down before I move on to some other methods of breaking it down.